Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Lots of different things going on here. Yes. Um, we're, we're still waiting on John, and we're going to talk about some stuff going on there. I did. Let's, go ahead. I, I did see the chat bring up the Q thing a lot. Yeah, so like let's three or four let's times. yeah let's throw so that up here on the screen. Start, but yeah, um, this this particular one is from the NRA ILA, and it says your mm -hmm. action needed. Urge the Department of Justice to rein in ATF's arbitrary determination on Honey Badger pistol. And if you haven't heard about this, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives (ATF) recently informed firearm manufacturer Q that in ATF's view, the Q's Honey Badger pistol with stabilizing brace is actually a short barrel rifle and therefore subject to the National Firearms Act, NFA. The NRA strongly disagrees with this arbitrary, uh, inequitable, and incorrect determination by ATF that puts millions of firearms owners in danger of federal prosecution. And it goes on. Um, who, wants to, who wants to get into this first? Uh, Walt, I know you um, went through some stuff. Yeah, let's let Walter. I haven't read all of it, so correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, but the mm -hmm. Honey Badger people, the company, were promoting it as shooting it like a rifle, correct? Um, no, I, I don't. I thought I read, I read a little bit. and that, So what, bit shouldering, read, you're saying? Yes, yes. Actively promoting it as such. Hmm. And... Okay. And you're walking a fine line. That's like poking the. That's like you poking know. The this is supposed to be an arm brace, right? Mm -hmm. Supposed to be an arm brace, right? Yeah, but so I thought the ATF said that your use wasn't. Uh, so so lots of people do that, right? With these I, pistol braces, lots of people do that. Yeah. Um, and the ATF said that they're not going to go after people for their use of it. Are you saying that because the manufacturer was doing it, maybe they're like, oh, well, you, you're. Uh, this is the You're promoting it as, it, yes, that's where I'm. That's where I'm kind of going with it. Not that I'm saying that ATF stuff is right. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, if you keep poking them, if you if you promote it as being, uh, you know, like a way around the other thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, and to shoot it as a rifle, or like a rifle is fired primarily, I think you, I, you know, just I would never do that as a company. I would never promote it that way. I've seen, um, for example, uh, Adam Kraut. Mm -hmm. you know, Adam Kraut is right. Mm -hmm. He was uh, mm -hmm. sponsored by um, by SB Tactical. Mm -hmm. uh, when he would show SB Tactical brace, he never put it to his shoulder and shot it like a. Being a lawyer, he is. He never put it to his shoulder and shot it like that because, I think he probably figures that that oh, you know I know I know what they say, but what are they going to do? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so you know. Uh, that's where I, I, that's, I, I, ATF needs to be reeled in. All these federal agencies need to be reeled in on their lawmaking stuff, which they're not, they're not, they're not supposed to make law. And then say one thing is good, and then you know a year later say it's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of what they're doing here. Yep. Um, yeah. And, and the only way that's going to happen is if it goes to federal court, and then it goes from federal court to the Supreme Court, and they have to hear it. Yeah. And it's a can it's a can of worms that the Supreme Court doesn't want to open in its current because that would reel in the Environmental Protection Agency and all these other government agencies that come out with these mandates and, and all of a sudden it's law. But um, I think they need to be reeled in. Go ahead, Rolando. They, they do. Uh, my concern with the Supreme Court is I haven't seen because we haven't had a prominent gun case in so long. Even though, let's say that we get Amy Coney Barrett, um, you know, we did an episode on her a couple of weeks ago on our show. And on first glance, she seems to be pretty good with pro-Second Amendment. I know that Adam Gottlieb from the Second Amendment Foundation, I think he, he had a good um, primer on her saying why she'd be a good pick. But anytime that I, I'm sure people have heard of Chevron deference, uh, if they haven't, that's basically where either the Supreme Court allows – you know, a lot of pat. Well, first of all, it's usually when a law gets passed, and at first we're like, "Whoa, we know that law is blatantly unconstitutional right away. Why doesn't the Supreme Court take this out?" And it's usually like, "Well, 
you guys pass it until somebody sues about it or, or brings it up like we can't do anything about it. Or they'll sometimes look at, well, if the Supreme Court already ruled on something in the past, they won't, you know, basically look at it again. And sometimes that's a problem with conservative judges. You never know what they're going to do when that happens. Are they going to say, well, we already talked about this issue with the NFA, so it's settled law. So even if we don't like it because the Supreme Court in the past may have dealt with a case similar to this, too bad, so sad, it's already been decided. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's why. I get scared even with conservative judges because sometimes they tend to. You don't know what they're going to say. You, I don't know what they're going to do. I always yeah. know what the left is going to do. I actually never know what the conservatives are going to do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I agree with that. Um, I, so, I'd rather not get there, but you know mm-hmm. it's tough. SB Tactical actually weighed in on this, and this is in uh, Truth About Guns. Let me get that up on the screen for everyone. Because the honey badger has an SB. T- I, I thought it said it had a honey uh, SB Tactical bracelet. Uh, I don't know if that's an SB Tactical. It could be, yeah. SB Tactical. It almost looks like the oh. end cap is the SB Tactical part, but none of the rest is. SB yeah, okay. Tactical. okay. That's possible. Yeah, SB Tactical stands with Q, LLC against ATF Honey Badger ruling, um, and is disappointed. Uh, so it says here, SB Tactical <laughs> in conjunction with the Firearms Regulatory Accountability Co- Coalition, FRAC, and the National Rifle Association stands in solidarity with QLLC and is disappointed by the recent ATF actions in classifying their Honey Badger pistol as a short-barreled rifle. This classification is based on a seemingly arbitrary set of criteria and promises to create unnecessary confusion and anxiety amongst millions of legal gun owners and the industry as a whole. Um, the ATF is saying in part that they will not evaluate an accessory as a standalone product, but the characteristics of the entire firearm influenced the decision. Characteristics such as optics chosen, magazine capacity, and how the gun is marketed or length mm. of pull Boom. will holistically determine a firearm's <laughs> NS- NFA classification. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I said about how they were marketing it. That's so, yeah. yeah, so so because of that, see, I, that was going to be the next question I'm, I was going to ask. Does that affect people that bought SB Tactical braces and put them on their own pistols you know ar pistols ak pistols or whatever has so much room here to do whatever they want that it's dangerous and we can't have that yeah that that's the problem i don't know now when you explained it there it seems like this only affects and what walter's saying this would only affect the honey badger for now Mm -hmm. um but yeah you don't want to set presidents of course yeah this this they could go after is it because it's a telescoping uh, brace rather than side folding or fixed is it w- what's the reason is it yeah. because q q shoulders it all the time oh here, well like here Brian we go again we 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 started with this whole thing a while back and mm-hmm. went this big circle yeah and now we're right back to where we started mm-hmm. with all these unanswered oh yeah they were already answered oh unanswered questions again, yeah exactly and again, right. and again and yeah. uh brian mm-hmm. quick says i wonder if a competitor to q made a complaint to the atf kevin uh brittingham can be a polarizing person. I would not put it past his haters to draw attention to Q from the ATF. That happens, Walt. I think you uh, oh, might know a little something. Yeah, the, the gun industry does not all <laughs> love. It, it's not one big happy family. I've said this before. Lots of, <laughs> lots, yeah. lots, of the gun lots of hoes out there in, in the <laughs> firearm industry. Yeah, well, and, and, think, hose. <laughs> and I think a lot of people forget that uh, just because you're in the firearms industry doesn't mean you care about the Second Amendment. You. Yeah, all the time, true. Mm-hmm. even though it behooves you to care about it. It's like, well, if I make this type of gun and I just have the lobbyists eliminate my competitors type of gun, but not mine, I'm OK with that mm-hmm. rather than let's let's not put any regulations on firearms and then we can make whatever we want. Yes, dog eat dog, I think. Yeah. Or 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 like myself, where um, I had something happen to me and, and then I look around through other people in the industry and it's like they didn't get a letter. Why didn't they get a letter? Mm-hmm. So do I do I make a stink about it and be the be the in the mm-hmm. in the industry or just mind my own business? Well, I think I think that depends on um, on who yeah. you're ta- who you're talking to, Walter. So just for a little bit of backstory, if no, if you guys, if folks are watching, they don't understand that. So Walter makes a fifty caliber fifty BMG upper bolt action that goes on an AR fifteen lower, um, and he's been doing that for a while. That upper, okay. you you could buy that upper and then put it on any AR-15 lower. The AR-15 lower will be your serialized uh, 
would right. be your actual firearm. That would be what would be serialized. The upper, not so much, until some stuff went down and magically the ATF found its itself knocking on your door. You want to take it from there? Well, all the people who made uppers, 50 caliber uppers, got a letter. Mm-hmm. Me and three or four other people. That now your upper might be a firearm. You might want to get it looked at. Mm-hmm. Well, all that meant is your firearm's an upper and you better stop. Mm-hmm. Because I we met with them in D.C. With you two, tried to fight it. You spent some money on lawyers. Uh, right? Adam Kraut and um, I forget the other guy's name. Good lawyer that does Second Amendment uh, uh, gun Prince, rights stuff. Prince. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Eric Prince. And, yeah. Um, and we met with them and we sat and talked and discussed things and everybody was smiling and, you know, typical stuff. But in the end, they changed, it changed nothing. Well, I don't uh, think it was necessarily the end. I think that, look, when I speak to a lot of people about that, Walter, and I know how the industry is and I 100% agree with you that there's definitely a lot of haters out there. But uh, there's people I spoke to in the industry that really felt like you should have kept fighting that. Obviously, that's expensive. And, and you know, they said, hey, maybe you guys... We could do something to put the money together to fight this because everyone suffers in that. Maybe we haven't seen it yet, but the ATF is going to use that, especially if you don't, if well, you let it go to go after other people. The brace thing is different than my issue because there's not many people that do what I do. Mm-hmm. Right. But with braces, a lot of the big people, including Remington and Springfield Armory and all these big Everyone. names, all make I all make braces now mm-hmm. for. ARs for bolt action rifles for everything else shotguns mm-hmm. so you can't tell me that they can't can't all everybody can't come together as one and fight it or is everybody I think, so I think we should I think that's what this um I think this is what this article is talking about in uh mm-hmm. let me let me go back here and show it what's the name of this organization that they mentioned in here FRAC which is the Firearms Regulatory Accountability Coalition you know, I believe that they are trying to get together and fight several. There's there's some different organizations out there. When I I actually had a conversation with the owner of SB Tactical, and we talked about this kind of thing a little bit, and he said that he believes that everyone needs to get together and fight all these things. And he yep. wasn't saying just fight what the ATF is doing with the pistol brace, what the ATF tried to do to you, what they're trying to do to other people, where they're trying to create law, what they did with the. Um, with the uh, the bump stop, bump man. fire stop, yeah, yeah, you know we have um, to get together and push back on these guys so we could establish the law because clearly the ATF here has no clue of what they're doing. Well, I think um, I, I think that's kind of where you can say that this is a weakness. If if you want to call it the gun industry, or you want to, I think it's kind of bigger because the gun industry kind of falls more to the conservative side or the right or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. When the left gets really upset about something. Well, look at right now with woke culture and all that stuff and Black Lives Matter. Every company supports that, every single one. They've given hundreds of millions of dollars to that. It's insane that you can't get one industry whose very survival is is dependent on the whims of, you know, basically whatever the political winds are Mm -hmm. that year, whatever happens, doesn't try to put themselves together and really help help each other. Because there's nobody else there. Like they, uh, the the other side has billionaires and millionaires who are willing to throw down major cash. We have small we have small time donors. Like I think between Johan and I, we probably give two or three hundred dollars away every year between FPC, GOA, all those memberships. But that's a lot of money for us. But that's not a lot of money compared to what you know Bloomberg throws down a hundred million dollars. That's nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where we're in trouble. And I, and I think we need to get our collective heads out of our butts, especially the major companies, because I think that they're dealing with a paradigm. I think they're trying to deal with business the way that it was 30 years ago, and they haven't realized that this isn't how the game is played anymore. Politics has always been a game about money, but now PR with social media combining that and fighting a narrative is so much more important than it used to be. And you, you can only fight that. It's a divide and conquer industry. So if they're not together, they're just going to get taken out one by one, I think. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.